are very different though so you know, you know the first horse is a bit heavier a bit slower footed a little bit slower minded um, and so it, it, he takes a little bit more help and, and to kind of get going once he lands to get him to come back if you're slowing down for something uh, where the second horse is much smaller a lot nippier a lot quicker with his feet so you know you can be just a little bit more aggressive with him uh, so that was really the only difference other than that yeah no I guess nothing and then a question for Hannah, compared to last year, coming off the course this year, what did you think? Um, I didn't expect to be quite as up on the clock as I was um, last year. You know, it was quite a bit different footing, um, knee deep mud last year. So um, it was really a good feeling going around. The footing was great and everything jumped really well and road rides planned. So finishing was really exciting, kind of similar to last year. So. Going cool. into the show jumping phase, do you have any thoughts from maybe what you learned last year? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, I'm going to stay focused all the way through the finish flags. <laughs> kind of pretend the finish flags are another jump, maybe. I'm going to stay positive about it. <laughs> Stepping stone uh, for him. I mean, is there something that you're thinking of, of going on to, like, would you try to roll like next year? Or? Um, I mean, he went around this really easily, so I mean, of course, in my mind, but I have to see what the coaches say. But is that what's in your mind, or we'll see how he finishes? I mean, I would like to. <laughs> we'll see. Any more questions? for our esteemed panel, one old guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can you just give me a little bit of background on your horse? Which one? The, I'm sorry, the one in the league. Sorry. Um, we bought him two years ago uh, from Ireland. He was five, obviously. Um, he had just done some show jumping over there. The only thing he could do is walk and canter. Didn't have a trot. Um, bought him from Francis Darwin. Uh, and we just kind of have been bringing him along. I mean, really, I think it, we're in 10 now. It was just last April I started eventing him. Just kind of, so he's really kind of come a long, you know, long way quite quickly. And he'll stay. He'll definitely do another season. Next is coming spring at intermediate, too. I'm not in any hurry to bump him up to advanced. When you say last April, do you mean April 2009 or April yeah. 2009? Yeah, no, April 2009. Sorry, yeah. And what made you buy a horse that doesn't come well, we finally did get him to trot, and it was pretty. But it was just, <laughs> it was quite hard to get him to trot. I mean, those guys, you know, they don't really care if they trot. You know, they just, you know, they got a canter to the jumps, not trot, so. And um, Holly, Holly Becker and Catherine Kraft own that horse. I'd say these are as good as you could get. I mean, it was cold for us, but the horses recovered so well. Even the, yeah, there's some, <clears throat> well, my, two, two, both two star horses are quite green, and I was concerned about how they would handle the, you know, it's a long course for them, and uh, they both recovered very well. So I think that sort of says a lot about the footing and the condition. Did you think the standard of the course both courses, actually, since you rode around both of them, what were your thoughts coming in and then on the other side of it? Well, I mean, the, the courses uh, here always ride harder than a horse uh, because of the terrain. And, uh, you know, I thought that, I thought you got it about right. I mean, the two-star, there was, you know, trouble, but it was spread around everywhere. Um, my two horses struggled at different parts of the course. You know, there wasn't one part that was tougher than the other for each horse. I mean, it was uh, so. I think that's a good sign. Um, 
and the three star, um, you know, it might have been a fraction softer than last year, but it's, you know, it's about on par, and I think it, it worked out well. And you know, I, I think we all agree that it's uh, this is a great experience for the horses, and you know, whether they're ready to move up or not, I mean, it gives you them a good experience and gives you a handle on you know what kind of horse you've got for the future. questions before we let these guys check their horses and celebrate a little bit? One, more, one for Aaron, because I've seen everybody here at the press conference before, except you. How does it feel? I'm really excited. I was uh, pretty shocked at how well my horse went on the flat the other day. Uh, that's the best score he's ever gotten, and two months ago we got a 65 at Richland, so we made a bit of headway, uh, thanks to Silva Martin. And again, I was just so pleased with him today. He has been running intermediate since March, and his spring was very spotty. I wanted to get to a two-star, and it just wasn't quite there for me. He's been a little bit of a slow learner, and he's figured out his job now, and he just he absolutely loves it. He's, he's a really great rider on cross country. So it's, it was neat to be in this position, but really neat to have the ride I had on him today. I wanted to ask you if, if the same question that I asked uh, Hannah. What is this a, a springboard for? What are you going on to? What's your ambition with this horse? Um, you know, I mean, I would obviously love to do Rolex at some point, but I mean, I sit down and talk to the old guy next to me um, about that. Um, but I think if if um, tomorrow goes well, um, you know, my show jumping has been something I've been working on a lot this year, just because I've had some issues with it, but. I was very happy with him today, and uh, I think I'd like that to be the plan for the spring, but you know, there's older and wiser people than me helping me, so <laughs> just make sure they think the same thing. You said people, plural. Yes. Who? who? Um, Philip is my primary cross-country coach. Right. Um, Silva does my dressage. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Fargis primarily does my show jumping, and then um, I have Rolly boarded at David and Karen O'Connor's farm, and David and Karen have both been great about kind of filling in all the blanks whenever I can't get up to Phillips or, um, you know, can't get to Joe's or anything like that, and they've really, um, you know, really taken me into the program, and so I also feel like I can go to them for anything. I've, I've kind of pretty much got everybody you could possibly ask for helping me out, and it's... So it's got no excuse now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are different techniques, but I mean, I pretty much focus on one particular thing with the, I mean, Philip and Silva I've been taking lessons with for quite a few years now, um, and as well as Joe. I mean, I've probably been taking lessons with three, like, four years, five years, um, with the three of those. Um, and then, I mean, the, once, once you get them to a certain level, I mean, I mean these <laughs> Every one of these coaches has you know, been to the Olympics or the Worlds, and you know, there's there's different ways to do things, but the concepts on how horses work physically and what is correct are pretty much universal. So I mean, sometimes there's a little bit different ways to get there, but you know, if you understand the end result um, and really under understand the mechanics of the horse and the riding, then you can piece it together. Okay. What's your biggest ambition? Uh, I would love to ride for the U.S. team. But you're not a full-time professional, right? No. No? Do I have to be able to do that? Is that a requirement? No, no, no. Well, I, well that was like, so you, that was your opportunity to say, I am a... I'm an amateur. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> is that what we're looking for? That part. No, no. You now have a coach in your PR. This is your PR coach. <laughs> Am I missing something? Yeah. What? Sharpen what did up, you put How's that? Oh, um, I'm a financial advisor.